ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our summer show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the premier performance of a new musical suggested by Mark Twain's delightful Innocence Abroad, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another musical first is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable Mark Twain gave Lawrence and Lee their inspiration for this musical romp. I shall be the nimble-tongued Mr. Twain, born Samuel Clemens, and Dorothy Warnshold is Sylvia in this lyrical excursion called Innocence Abroad. <laughs> of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Well, you ever been within earshot of a navigating tent on a riverboat? Well, now just listen to him. Shouting his sound. Mark One! Mark Wayne! That's it. That's where I got it. From the jargon of the Mississippi River. That's my jargon, too. Take this story, for instance. There are a few whoppers in it, but it's the truth, mainly. So how about joining us? We're off on an ocean voyage. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main For many a stormy wind trouble where Jackson's home again Sailing, sailing Many a stormy wind shall blow where a jack comes home again. Quaker City on a conducted tour of the garden spots of the world. Now, this here is quite a ship. It's sort of a black hole of Calcutta with a rudder. My cabin is big enough to swing a cat in, but don't insure the cat. The passengers, they all seem to be 60 years old and over. And that's a picnic crowd for you. That is, all except that young lady on the top deck. Good evening. Oh, good evening. May I ask what that is you're reading with such interest? The guidebook. Hmm. Do you know, it says here that the Emperor of Morocco has 500 wives. Hmm. But even he's not sure of the exact count. Well, when you get up into the 500s, a dozen wives one way or another doesn't matter much. Oh, really, mister? Clemens? Sam Clemens. And you are... I'm not sure that it's proper. Oh, go on and say it. None of the other passengers can hear it without their ear horns adjusted. <laughs> well, I, I'm Sylvia Carter. How nice to meet you, ma'am. You talk like a Missourian. Mm-hmm. Hannibal, Missouri, Miss Sylvia. Born, bred, 
and kicked out. <laughs> I'm in St. Louis. Oh, that's a wonderful place, St. Louis. First time I ever saw it, I could have bought the whole blame town for six million dollars. Mistake of my life that I didn't do it. It's hard to believe that out there, just below the moonrise, France is waiting for us. Hello, France. You know, I think I'm in love with France. Oh, that's dangerous. Never trust love at first sight. Now, this was love at first sound. For years, I've been in love with the music of France. Bizet, César Franck, Charpentier. Do you know Gustave Charpentier? Old Gus Charpentier? Why, sure. Who is he? Oh, <laughs> he wrote some of the loveliest music in the world.
lovely, Miss Sylvia. Lovely. You know, from the way I the way I, I, I feel that you sing, I'm sure you're one person who'll never be sick on the high seas. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid I must turn in now, Mr. Clement. On page 96 of the guidebook, it says that you should get a good night's rest before the evening, before you dark. But, uh... Oh, good night. Blast, page 96. Love is first sound. Two. Two guitars. In a nice, polite tone of voice, would you tell us to shut its big, fat pages? Really, Mr. Clement? How do you expect to see the significant things in Europe without expert help? Sit down for a minute. Here's an interesting little sidewalk up there. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Please. Well, well all right. This, well, this is an interesting cafe. Now, look around you, Miss Sylvia. There at the front table, a French gentleman. And there, a Spaniard. <laughs> Undoubtedly, that's the Dutchman. Each speaks a different language. But watch. Watch how international music can be. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, brother John. Morning bells are ringing. Morning bells are ringing. Ding, ding, dong. Ding, ding, dong. Oh, I know the French of that. Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous, sonnez des matines, sonnez des matines, ding-dang-dong, ding-dang-dong. Now watch, our Spanish friend is caught. 
Martin Leo, Martin Leo, quieres tú, quieres tú, toca la campaña, toca la campaña, ding, ding, ah, do, the Dutchman's ding, lips are moving. Do. Who can resist it? Pater Janke, Pater Janke, schlafen Sie, schlafen Sie, haben Sie verschlafen, haben Sie verschlafen, dunk, 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 dunk. All together. Are you winking? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John, morning, 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 Turn with the second act of Innocence Abroad in just a moment. <laughs> Do you have any idea what it takes to move one armored division of the United States Armed Forces from training camp to port of embarkation? Act two of our musical version of Mark Twain's Innocence Abroad, starring Gordon McRae as the itinerant Samuel Clemens, Dorothy Warren Schultz as the lovely Sylvia Carter, with Benny Rubin as the guide. and now we're stuck with one that talks. <laughs> well, what's your name? My card. A. Bilfinger. Guy extraordinaire. <laughs> Ancient ruins my specialty. Mm. Bilfinger. Hmm. That won't do at all. No, an Italian should have a romantic name like uh, Giovanni del Matista. I have it. We'll call him Freddy. Freddy? <laughs> That's my name, Freddy. Freddy Ferguson. Lead on, Freddy. Yeah. Look, 
that this letter is a written by in a handwriting of Christopher Columbus. Who? Uh, Christopher <laughs> Columbus. That's his own handwriting. He'll write all by himself. I've seen boys in America only 14 years old that could write better than that. <laughs> Look, this is the great, the Christopher Columbus. I don't he... care. I just don't care who it is. It's the worst writing I ever saw. <laughs> now, if you've got any specimens of first-class penmanship, ready? Shot them out. But the great Christopher Columbus, if you keep talking about this chap, Columbus, what did he do? <laughs> they discover America. That's all what he do. Discover America. Did now, you? hold on there. We're just from America ourselves, and we didn't hear anything about it. <laughs> didn't we, Sylvia? Oh, Sam. Christopher Colombo. That's a pleasant name. Is he dead? What was it, Bob? And look over here. It's a genuine royal Egyptian mummy. Hmm. What did you say this gentleman's name was, Freddy? Name? He got no name. <laughs> mummy, Egyptian mummy. He looks remarkably calm. <laughs> Is he dead? Oh, I he's been a dead a three thousand a year. Oh, and I guess we're a little late for the funeral. <laughs> I hold my temper. Now we go see the tomb of great Julius Caesar. Caesar? Uh-huh. Caesar. That's a familiar name. Yeah. Tell me one thing, though, Freddy. Is he dead, too? Mama me! <laughs> Tomorrow morning we'll be home, Sam. Yes, Sylvia. Somewhere out in the darkness, just beyond the starlight, is New York City. Are you sorry you came on the trip, Sam? Oh, no. Travel can be pretty wonderful. Matter of fact, I recommend it as an antidote for bigotry and narrow-mindedness. You can't get a charitable view of the human race by vegetating in one little corner of the earth all your life. Oh, there are so many things I'll remember. Gibraltar, swimming in a sea of rainbows. Milan, and its marble wilderness of graceful spires. Venice. Yes. Oh, Sam. Sylvia, what's the matter? I didn't do anything the guidebook said. I memorized all the handy hints to world travelers, and I didn't take any of them. Well, what does your old guidebook say? It said, never drink the water, never fall in love. Do you put your order? Kindly do not shove. Hold on, Sylvia, don't get left behind. But I did it, Sam. No. Yes. I did exactly what the guidebook said not to do. So did I. When did you realize that you'd done it? Oh, it was in that little town at the back end of Lake Geneva. I don't know what I was thinking of, Sam. But I drank a whole glass full. You drank the water? Wasn't I foolish? No, not half so foolish as I was. Oh, Sam, you didn't. Mm-hmm. Right here on B-deck, underneath the life preservers. When you sang that aria by Gus Carpenter, it was love at the first sound. Oh, oh, Sam, well, I think the world of you. Oh, but I've got to tell you something. For a wedding present, my father has promised me a two-year guided tour around the world. That settles it. I couldn't spend two years being pushed around by Freddy and his cousins. No, I, I fear, Miss Sylvia, that you and I shall never be anything but friends. Good friends, Sam. And I shall file the memory of your face and your voice with your Gibraltar's rainbow and the spires of Milan. Sam. Yes, all cross index for ready reference when I write my book. What will it be called? Well, now let's see. How about Through the Old World with Sylvia and Sam? Oh. <laughs> no, I, I'd never buy a book with a title like that. I, I might buy it, but I wouldn't like it. I know. 
for Sylvia, the sweet, the innocent, I'll call it Innocent Abroad. Dorothy Warren Schultz will be back in just a moment. And our thanks to Benny Rubin, who is the guide, and to our entire company. Our musical tonight, suggested by Mark Twain's Innocence Abroad, was written especially for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroad. To meet the transportation demands of our defense program and of our civilian economy, the railroads are hard at work on their vast program of expansion and improvement. Yes, the railroads are exerting every effort to enlarge their transportation capacity, to keep in step with the needs of the nation's commerce and rearmament program. See, Gordon, it was fun going on a musical tour with you. Well, it certainly was, Dorothy. You know, we're really traveling next week when we spin the fabulous musical tale of the journey of Marco Polo. Marco Twain this week, Marco Polo <laughs> next week. You certainly get around. <laughs> and you're going to be the beautiful girl, the most beautiful girl, I should have said, in all the domains of Kubla Khan. See you in Zanadu next Monday, Gordon. It's the day, Dorothy, for the premiere performance of Journey into the Sun. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday, and another musical first, this is Gordon McRae saying, Good night. <laughs> Craig can be seen in Warner Brothers on Moonlight Bay. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Firestone with Barbara Gibson on NBC.